Killer Killer Podcast Killer Killer Official Com This is the sound of the Killer Killer Beatbox Body Part Sample Pack Over 120 loops, samples and one shots for your music production Exclusively on Splice <laughs> How are you? I'm good man, real good Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the man. The man of the, the next 40 minutes. Goes by the name of Travis Moore. Multi-talented creative, mutual creative, but more importantly, the man behind the statue of Lemmy at the Rainbow Bar and Grill. The man behind the Sharpie Marker art experience. Hailing from the US of A, Travis Moore. Nice to be here. You like that? <laughs> yeah, it was great. Hell of an introduction. Yeah. <laughs> it makes me sound really great. Yeah, well, <laughs> nothing short of the truth, my friend. <laughs> nothing short of the truth. <laughs> What's been going on? Uh, not much, man. Just winged it back in this joint mm. last few days. You come here quite. You, you you like a bit of London, don't you? Yeah, I love London. Yeah. What's the What's the vibe? Is it Is it just a kind of childhood thing that you kind of grew up on? It's a little bit of that. I mean. Um, I lived here for a little while as an exchange student in the 90s and um, got a lot of friends here. It, it really feels like home. London feels like home. England is, um, I don't know, I mean, it's just the scene too, you mm. know, and the art scene. So kind of a combination of having an opportunity, big outdoor gallery like Brick Lane um, to be able to put my <laughs> art up and work on street art where it's welcomed. Uh, not a lot of places in the states where it's welcomed, mm. uh, where it's not going to result in some kind of penalty <laughs> on your part, <laughs> yeah. um, some kind of fine. Um, it's nice to have that space. I've had a couple of shows here. Uh, I felt like that they were that they went really well last year. I was here for about a year last year, uh, off and on. Yeah, you were. And um, That's right. I mean, I, I I really consider this place, you know, my new home base. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna be doing a lot of stuff this year from London. Hopefully hitting the continent some, um, some of the other art meccas, Amsterdam, Berlin, um, and Milan. Nice. And I'm just looking, you know, to do shows, create art, and I just love the vibe here, and I uh, love my friends. Oh. So, I mean, I love being in London. Yeah. So. It has an energy, doesn't it? I think Brick Lane and uh, the, the east east side, the east end side of, of London, it, it's it's held a, uh, a flame for a lot of art, development since like the early noughties maybe a little bit before um it seems like your your stuff really fits in you know appropriately where oh, well i appreciate of, that do you know what i mean i appreciate that i mean uh, i put a piece up about a year ago it's still up um it's a little bit of longevity so maybe that's reflecting the the fit mm. um i went by and took a look at it uh needs to be inked up a little bit but i'm planning some other stuff um I do a lot of paste-up stuff, mm -hmm. which is temporary in a lot of ways. However, a lot of it's still up, so it so makes stuff? you feel good. What's the paste stuff? Um, my paste-up stuff that I've been doing is just an extension of my Sharpie art. Um, nice. A lot of the pieces that I'm exhibiting uh, and selling prints of, I also paste up, so it's kind of a promotional. That's cool. So I like if, it. So if you walk down and you check out that area, you'll see some of the other art that you would see in normally in a gallery situation. Some of it's been sold, some of it hasn't, but it just continues to promote what I'm doing. And then I also work in some political stuff as well. I do some political ad. Um, I'm working on a Trump piece right now that's already been uh, printed. Um, I'm going to be speaking with a guy tonight. Uh, we're planning on pasting it up. And um, we we'll just see what kind of traction nice. we get yeah. from that kind of stuff too. I like it's the conversation. Been. I like the conversation of the political aspects of it. Without a doubt, without a doubt, because that's what I would say. Like art, modern art, such as yours, and I think the the the, the new era of comedians. They're the last, in my opinion, they're the last uh, creative piece of creative freedom where you, people you know you can kind of say and do what you want music doesn't it doesn't actually have so much of that anymore because there's so many like so many so much tape you've got to go under and if you start saying the wrong thing that's a little bit on pc or a little bit mis uh, misconstrued then all of a sudden you're the bad guy mm -hmm. um and it could be detrimental to your career mm -hmm. comedians don't give a shit <laughs> Do you know what no, I mean? usually they don't. Yeah, and they're gonna have a following regardless. You know, yeah. it's, it's almost like the bad press 
you know, is good press, all press is good press type thing. Yeah. I understand commercial aspects of trying to create music and mm-hmm. being radio friendly or, uh-huh. and at the same time being sociable, you know, sociable, viable, you know, I, yeah. just, I think that the limitations a lot, you know, is, is on just the way you make money in that industry um, with art, uh, with graphic art. You know, you can say what you want to say. Um, that's not going to mean that you're not going to be targeted by other people um, and maybe, you know, called something else than mm-hmm. what you really are. Um, it's just, I, I really think that, you know, comedic, you know, comedic uh, effort, you know, uh, if you can't laugh at yourself, you know, you, you almost have to laugh at some of these politicians or you'll be upset about the situation. Yeah. You know, we're, I mean, I'm dealing, our country's dealing, I'm not. Uh, he's not my president. Um, our country's dealing with a guy right now that if you don't laugh at the dude a little bit, uh, you'll get really furious. Um, I've, I've figured it out real quick, mm, yeah, being home yeah, for yeah. a couple of months um, and seeing it every day. Um, mm. That's why, you know, with art, I try to target him a little bit. It makes me feel a lot better. I know he's not coming after me. He can't do anything to me. Yeah. Uh, but it makes me feel a little bit better about... Um, Your contribution to yeah, I mean, if, if nothing else, I'm one more voice saying what he's doing ain't right. Yeah, you know, and ultimately, time will judge. Uh, over time, uh, the the people will realize, you know, what's going on in that situation. I mean, y'all guys are dealing with same kind of things, same kind of issues here. Yeah, it's you just know. you know, it's just a, it's just, just just different ride, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so, same game, different different day. Um, you know, it, you said something just then that was quite a bit of a, an epiphany in my head. I was like, hey, you know what? It's true. It's like artistry nowadays, like cr- creative ones, people like yourself, that there is a, there's a window for you to laugh at yourself. There's an irony yeah. in some of the things you do. And it's the same with comedy and the comedians nowadays. They, they, you, you're allowed to laugh at yourself. You know, if you're laughing at yourself, therefore you can take the piss <laughs> wherever you want. Yeah, for sure. With musicians, there's not that. There's no, mm. you know, this is some dead serious yeah. shit we're doing, right? You know, you can't <laughs> be laughing. You know, I love Steel Panther. I love The Darkness. Oh, you know, yeah, this yeah. is fun it's stuff. Funny, yeah. If they started taking the Mickey out of Donald Trump, that would still be funny because they're laughing at themselves. Mm. You know, it's it's such a serious game. The, the movies and the it makes it a lot easier when you slap on the spandex to build yeah, to, yeah, 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 for it to be funny. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I wouldn't know too much about it. <laughs> I think my friends know. <laughs> so just to break down your art a little bit, just to get under the hood of it, like you deal just for the people that may not know yeah, enough, sure. enough about your stuff, which which they will do after this is the Sharpie experience in which you, you, you you work as a medium with the regular Sharpie, but you'll take out a whole <laughs> shop front. Oh well, yeah, for sure. For this, sure. I mean, this, these are, these are like remarkable pieces of oh, work. Well, thanks man. I you appreciate I mean? that, bro. I really do. I, I like working in a large style, um, you know, working with a Sharpie marker, uh, after approaching a lot of other different media, um, I work with acrylics, I've done do pencil. I do a lot of these other things, um, but you can always correct what you're doing with a sharpie. Mm. Uh, it's kind of like a high wire act, mm-hmm. and I, I like the thrill of that, especially when it's on a really large scale because there's no going back once you put no rubbing that, it out. Nothing. There's no corrections, and um, you know you you really find yourself, uh, you know taking yourself to a different level it's like in the zone you know when guys are shooting hoops um that kind of idea where you got a flow going mm-hmm. you know similar to making music mm-hmm. you know i think it's more like playing jazz because i do get to have some type of range you know freedom to be able to change what i'm doing a lot of this is stream of consciousness you know drawing mm-hmm. so um even on a large scale like that maybe a theme and then work off that theme. I like to call it sharpism, uh, like realism, surrealism. Yeah, dude. And it's kind of its own little movement. And um, I've had other people contact me and say, hey, man, digging what you're doing, you mind if we use that moniker? Sure, man, proliferate. You know, the more prolific it is, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Proliferate out there, more people doing what I'm doing. Create a culture for it. I love it, man, because uh, anybody can walk down to the shop and uh, get yourself a black Sharpie marker. It costs you a couple of quid. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to get in this game, come out and come right. You know, 
know, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm starting to find more connections with people that do graphic stuff. Um, going to a drawing club, which is really nice, reaching out to other people. Drawing club? Yeah, once uh, once every other week, I go and go meet up with some guys. They've got, they've got a great crew going. They had a great show here recently. And uh, this is a collective of people that... that, that they do Sharpie, yeah. yeah. Do That's Sharpie awesome. marker, yeah, and uh, and they're great. I mean, and they do they do a lot of other stuff too. I mean, they're out there with the spray cans, putting up big blow ups, you know, doing that kind of thing yeah. as well, yeah. uh, graffiti based stuff. But it's it's nice to know that there's other people that are doing something that's similar to me. Uh, something that I really feel like is different. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think anybody really works in the same style I do. Um, that's not to say that I can't use a Sharpie and, and maybe make something more photorealistic, make something more cartoonish, make something more, you know, bold lines and just words. Yeah, but, yeah. but the combination of all of that together is kind of, uh, and then a lot of times it together make making another image itself. And um, mm. that's whenever it's like, you know, I really feel like that I'm working, you know, where I'm trying to do something different than what a lot of other people are doing. Yeah. You know, because yeah. you see a lot of, you know, pop stuff and I've worked in pop and I do, you know, I will do that from time to time and do all kinds of commission stuff. Um, but when you got a lot of people that are doing the exact same thing, it, it gets a little old. And even if it's really great work. And it's hard to distinguish yourself. So I've kind of been on a mission for the last, well, I started doing Sharpie about 10 years ago. But really. That was before the, they came over here. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I started doing stuff, you know, as early as 2001 and uh, was really starting to concentrate mainly on Sharpie. But within the last five, six years, boom, you know, yeah. that's been, I start to see it other places now. So, which I'm really proud. I mean, if I had any way in contributing to that, or maybe there's a lot of like-minded individuals that started moving towards it as well, just because trends happen. Mm. I'm happy yeah, about absolutely. that too. Yeah, yeah. You know, the more exposure that people that are working in art get, period, the yeah. happier I am. I just, I really feel like that it's, it's a hard game. And uh, sometimes you've got to really, you know, put your nose to the grindstone, when yeah. you're trying to push what you're doing and to see it proliferate, to see more people working in Sharpie, I mean, it's amazing to me. I love it. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, at, at one point in time, I did a couple of Sharpie sponsored shows and it seemed like that the uptick, you know, was really rolling, but it's been years. So I'd love, I'd love to see them come back, you know, yeah. as a brand and maybe do some more of that. Um, they should do. I think they've just changed their focus a little bit. You know, the the company was bought and um, their headquarters were moved and their marketing strategy changed. And But here lately, uh, they've got a really great Instagram feed, Sharpie does, just at Sharpie. And uh, what they're doing on there is really great. They're involving people. They're putting people's work up. Um, none of that's, mine's none of mine's been up, but they're putting people's work up, and um, I think that's a really a step in the right direction. Yeah, because I was I, again, you know, to highlight that you're one of the pioneers of this, and what I what I like about the stuff that you do, and your flow state when you're doing it must be in, intense, because the way that your your stuff is presented is like the closer you go into the the piece, the more details you find, and the the layers. Like I, I, I've seen, I've seen stuff you've done with with the, the London um, map, mm. and it's to the, the wire. Like oh, you've well, got thanks, all the man. details running, but like you were saying about your um, the, the the concept of the, the the design itself, you don't. What and this is what I like about it is you don't you don't merge that kind of graph aesthetic. You kind of what you what you do is you you try and keep it as true as you can mm. to the drawing that. It should be. Oh well, yeah. Do you know I, mean? I, I feel you, bro. Um, uh, and and that's the thing is that I really like for people to be able to see where my thought process is mm. going. And the more you examine it, the more you'll see where I'm coming from. And mm. maybe you get into that flow too. Mm. And uh, I try not to go into it with too many parameters as well. Um, I mean, a lot of the cityscape stuff I've drawn some of these Madness some so of these good. buildings and some so many of these areas so many times where you know a really large piece doesn't take very long but it's all the work before that that makes it that easy and 
you'll recognize the places. I want people to be able to say, yeah, I saw that, you know, and I get that and, and pick out, you know, your landmarks. And then if they look a little closer, they'll see some of the places they walked by. Yeah. And it's really kind of cool to see people realize that. And, you know, at a show uh, or even on the street, I, I was over on Brick Lane the other day. I've got a piece up over there, uh, this flat uh, over on Bethnal Green and, and uh, Brick Lane. And there's guys out there taking pictures, and it always feels really good yeah, to s- to see that and to watch the people point at certain areas of the piece, and either recognize the imagery mm-hmm. or connect in some way with what I've put up, and that's really what it's all about. And that's like I said, I mean, that's part of the reason why I really love London, mm-hmm. is that you've got so many people from so many places, uh, you know, tourists and residents, and you have an outdoor gallery space mm-hmm. where you're able to be, uh, you know, putting stuff up and be able to experiment with what you're doing, have yeah. some kind of interaction with mm-hmm. the public. It costs you nothing. That's right. Just your time, you know. Yeah. And um, it was really great to see that yesterday. I really, yeah. I really yeah, always I mean, enjoy it. I really um, enjoy that, you know. Yeah, I bet you do, Buffer. Um, when I first came across you, it was courtesy of the Rainbow Bar and Grill when I saw uh, you on a, it was on YouTube because mm. I'm an avid obsessive of of you know Motorhead the band Motorhead For and sure. and yeah and you know the the statue went up and I saw you on talking about it and I was like oh, who's this cat so let me just get the, <laughs> I need to know these sort of stuff because you know I, I, sure th- that's sure. how I that's how I n- knew you and then I saw you at the launch party about a year yeah, ago yeah for sure, for I, was sure. Like, I know exactly who that man is <laughs> you know so um where did you originate from uh, I'm from Texas, Texas. and um, I grew up in Texas um, went to school in Texas uh-huh. um, got a art degree I uh, also have a master's degree in kinesiology. Can you, what's that? Uh, it's to study the human movement, the body, and uh, how to make it more efficient. That's the best way to explain right. that. Nice. So physio slash you know nutrition slash biomechanics. Um, wow. it's, a, it's a degree that you get when uh, you're coaching American football and you want to make a few more bucks. So gotcha. did that for gotcha. a little while. And um, I actually coached and played for 14 years and, um, and coached collegiately and wow. uh, worked for the Buffalo Bills um, yeah. at, at one stop, yeah. Wow. And uh, they did their Damn. training camp at our, at our college, so got to have some interaction there. Uh, I really felt like that that was something I was going to do. My dad was a coach, a high school football coach. Um, I played uh, and always felt like that maybe that's something I could do. And I uh, got out of school, did that for a little while, uh, a few years. And uh, ultimately, the art that I'd been creating since I was a little kid, the the art, you know, that I'd been really wanting to do mm. kept calling to me. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I mean, working in college, I was already working on Sharpie. So I just I felt like that's what I wanted to do, but I just didn't know how I was going to be able to do that in the circumstances that I had. And so I packed everything up, I quit coaching, and mm-hmm. I moved to Los Angeles. And um, I got a little sidetracked in L.A. too. I mean, I had some success initially selling art. Um, like I said, I was in a couple of Sharpie-sponsored shows, uh, sold some pieces to some celebrity people, and mm-hmm. things were taking off. And I was also working on film and TV. Um, I, have, I have SAG cards, Green Actors Guild. So I uh, worked in TV wow. and film. Um, probably was in about 100 and something TV uh, shows and Stop. movies. Wait, hold on. So this is the, your, the, your breadth of like career changes and all the things that you, <laughs> yeah. you can do. This is, a, this is like a, a set I, skill. I've done a lot of different, skill. Yeah, I've done a lot of different things. I think that influences me as an artist. I um, bet, yeah. I mean... Um, understand a lot of different people and industries because of that Mm -hmm. um i had some good experiences and some bad Mm -hmm. i mean like everybody living in la uh i took a few breaks from la (laughs) Uh, (laughs) but um just because of it it was be honest uh you know and and it's a tough that's a tough nut to crack to los angeles um just for a variety of reasons um 
one of the things, though, that was really good is I ended up meeting the owner uh, of the Rainbow Bar and Grill. Mm -hmm. uh, also owns the Whiskey A Go Go, and that relationship, uh, the, the the gentleman was uh, was very supportive of what I was doing as an artist, and um, they're known at the Rainbow and at the Whiskey too for supporting artists, uh, whether whatever type of artist you are, mm -hmm. and. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that's that's what the basis of that place is. And it's no coincidence that a guy like Lemmy was hanging out there mm. um, at that place. And that was his joint because mm. he's the same type of guy, at least I believed he was, uh, that supported artists, other artists. Um, and he cared about the fans mm. and he cared mm. about people that followed him like yourself mm. uh, and were supportive of Motorhead and, and Lemmy as a person. Um, I've watched him many a day, talked to people uh, mm -hmm. from around the world mm -hmm. that came there, hoping to meet him, thinking he might be there, mm -hmm. and getting to have their few minutes with him. And he was always very nice. In fact, I would say he's probably the nicest rock star that I ever met. Mm -hmm. And uh, I met a few guys hanging out there. I've been around a few others. I've seen how they are. Uh, I've heard the stories about a lot of others, <laughs> and uh, he's really one of the nicest guys. And so when the opportunity arose to be able to be involved in some way, uh, because of my affiliation with the people that own the place, mm -hmm. um, I put my hat, you know, my name in the hat, and put my hat out, really. Help, mm -hmm. Let me help me, let me do this <laughs> somehow. And uh, they were kind enough to allow me to submit some ideas, Amazing. and it just kind of went from there. Um, and it involved a ton of people. Um, by no means did I do this, do that by myself. I, you know, I didn't sculpt that thing um, by myself. It wasn't done uh, that way. Um, I created a maquette that they used uh, as a basis for the idea. Um, they already had a photograph they liked uh, by a really great photographer, Robert John. They had done some stuff for Motorhead. Uh, Motorhead owned the rights to that photograph, um, we found out later. And we used that photograph as a basis for that statue. And uh, I contracted another group. Uh, well, the Rainbow contracted another group. Um, I contacted, but con they, and then we worked together mm -hmm. um, out of Provo, Utah, called Big Statues. And Matt Glenn was a great Great guy, great sculptor. Uh, they translated what I was doing. They used that photograph. And then I would say I probably managed it. It would probably be a good way to describe what I did. Um, tried not to micromanage it. Mm -hmm. uh, Delegate them where you can, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, I was answering to a lot of people. Um, you know, I was having to answer to the fans, number one, because uh, Caden DePena, who uh, is lead singer of Hyrax, had raised the oh, money, yeah. started the GoFundMe campaign, had raised the money, um, over 900 people, uh, fans, donated money, some was a wow. buck or two, up to yeah. hundreds of dollars um, wow. to finance this statue uh, that big statues did at a discount because they wanted to do it. Uh, they did it for cost. Uh, I really don't think they made anything on the thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I waived my fee as an artist. I made nothing on this, mm -hmm. zero. Uh, we wanted to do it for Lemmy. We wanted to do it for the Rainbow and for the fans. So I was having to answer to uh, Todd yeah, Singerman. Thing, yeah. yeah, Todd Singerman, Lemmy's yeah. Motorhead's management. Actually, yeah. Had to uh, answer to Cheryl, his widow. Mm -hmm. um, had to answer to Mike Maglieri and his son, Mikey, who's mm -hmm. now in charge of both those businesses. That's right. And at the time, their father. Uh, Rest in peace as well. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, I had to I had to answer to you know Mario at the time, like yeah. you're saying, yeah. and um, you know, and then on top of that, then there's other people that got involved and wanted to tell us, you know, that it needs to look like this or it needs to look like that. There wasn't a day mm -hmm. that went by that I didn't have someone else's input. Mm -hmm. Some of it welcomed, some of it not, mm -hmm. um, and then we guided it. And honestly, the goal was to get it done as soon as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. you know, those are the words I got told, and. Um, I think that's probably the fastest statue going up to honor anybody. Uh, I could, I've, I've looked. There's, I, I really, I can't find another example of someone passed away. 
that someone cared about, and they put in a statue any faster. We did it in about six months. Damn. And um, what? it was pretty crazy, yeah. honestly, and it went really fast. And um, my work oh, wow. uh, essentially was done, and it was handed over to the foundry after about three and a half months. And then I spent the rest of that time promoting what we were doing. Mm. Uh, I had interviews with publications, with radio, News. with yeah. pods, with... You know, anybody that wanted to talk about it in any way yeah, uh, wanted to promote what we were doing, promote myself, but promote what we were doing. And uh, at the unveiling, we had 150 media passes. Uh, I was staring into, you know, 150 yeah. lenses. Dude, I was there. Well, it's not a joke. Yeah, I was yeah. there watching it on live stream. Yeah, wasn't a joke. Uh, it was really, it was probably the biggest undertaking that I'd ever had anything to do with. Mm. And you really realized how many people that Lemmy touched. Uh, how many fans Motorhead has, um, had has, mm -hmm. yeah, it doesn't end. Yeah, no. And you and it, you really you understand more about the world. Um, I've met so many great people who I would call friends now mm -hmm. uh, who approached me because just you know like you did that yeah. night. Yeah. Um, and by the way, that was amazing to be. I really want to thank Yusuf for that being yeah, a Yusuf's part a of man, yeah. Being a we part of the Motorhead beer. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. So yeah. glad to, that you ended up putting us together yeah, because man. of it. Um, yeah. That was really a blast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to be able to meet more people like that and like yourself mm -hmm. as a result of what we did for the Rainbow um, and for Lemmy was, was really amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, can't say anything else. Um, and the, the whole thing, as a, uh, you know, together... Um, it allowed me to, as an artist, to grow and better prepared me uh, for being able to talk with people and talk with the press. And, you know, I'd done some TV and film, so I wasn't scared of the camera. <laughs> okay, but um, most of the time I was trying to stay out of it on most of the productions I was on because I was not the star, I was not the lead, I wasn't most of the time. Something else was to do the talking. It was yeah, your art. I was yeah. I was scenery. So right. for me to be able to talk and you know have that opportunity, I think this whole thing's you know prepared me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm not scared of anybody, I don't think, um, but it's just getting over. You know, that hurdle to be able to, you know, sit and talk just like we are. Yeah. And uh, if there's no better way than to get out there and to do it. And so that project really, that helped me quite a bit. So I've, I've learned a That's lot a, dude, from it. My, my, my fanboy's up to 13 right now. So I, I just had to let you run off and talk. And it's really nice that you, you I think all that time where you had been developing that, that skill set of being in front of the camera, so much of an intense, like, three month period oh it was insane yeah yeah I oh, mean you've, just, totally uh, you've literally just explained everything that I had so many questions for you know what I mean yeah ask me some other stuff I mean oh uh, no it's a mate it, whatever else dude. you'd like to ask about it I'm happy to answer it um, oh no there's just there's just so many there's so many like because it, it came it came about what was it like a, just over a year ago now right yeah well we put it in in August um, he had passed away uh, two years ago, this past Christmas. That's the one, yeah. So, I mean, it's the statue itself has been up for well over a year now. Um, Have you been there since? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I had the opportunity to go back um, through L.A. I was here in London, like I said, for about a year mm -hmm. off and on. And um, I had a ton of stuff in storage. I used to have a house in Vegas, and when I moved back to L.A., I moved with a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> so it went into storage, and uh, my folks have uh, since moved from Las Vegas. They had a house there as well. And they've retired a second time now to Florida. And right. so um, I, I didn't really have a reason to be in L.A. Um, I wasn't working on any projects there, and, it, and I felt like having my stuff there was not really all that great. So I went back into L.A. for a few days, got to see some folks, went by this, went by and took a look at Lemmy, of course. Mm -hmm, you, got, mm -hmm. you got to go back and go take a look. I haven't seen it yet. I'm, I'm chewing at the bit. Oh, well, you need to go. You yeah, need to go, I'm... mate. Um, and uh, I, I got to see a few friends, mm -hmm. but I was there for like, you know, just days. And mm -hmm. then I packed up the stuff and did cross-country, drove my stuff in a giant truck to Florida. Whoa. So I've spent the last two and a half months or so with my family um, over the holidays. Mm -hmm. Hadn't got to see them in about a year. My little nephew is uh, going to be seven in March. 
And um, awesome. I just wanted to spend some time with them. You did it, yeah. And my, my folks are getting a little bit older. My dad uh, will turn 72 mm-hmm. here in about uh, a little less than a week. Wow, nice. So I just birthday wanted, pops. Yeah, yeah. Happy birthday, Dad. Um, and it and it won't be you know it won't be a while you know before I see everybody again. I'm hoping maybe that they'll come and visit. Uh, if I'm London? still here, yeah, I would Dope. love. They've got a lot. You know, my sister has some of the same friends I do. Uh, it'd be really great for her to come and bring my nephew so that he can visit with his friends mm-hmm. that he's made that are their kids and it'd be really great I'd, I'd love to have my my folks come and come see me while i'm here maybe we we'll all go and go have a london time we'll together about the weather right yeah no well they know yeah, <laughs> it ain't they florida know. yeah no they know they know but um if not then i'll be back eventually um yeah, right. but i just wanted to spend some time with them you know knowing that i was going to be here for so long and also have they been to england before Yes, yeah, okay, my, so. yeah. My mom and dad uh, have both been over. You know, I was an exchange student here That's for a little right. while, and they came back and visited. Uh, visited my host folks, uh, host sisters, and uh, my sister was an exchange student here as well at the same time. So they wanted to come and see where we were at and had been. So they planned a trip. We actually came here, uh, went on to Paris, went mm-hmm. through the Channel. It was like right when it first yeah. opened. Oh, dude, yeah. It's been. It was a long time ago. Uh, yeah. It's like in the late 90s. That's right. Yeah. And um, but my mom also came back uh, subsequently and come visited with you know same folks. And um, I would love for I love for him to come again. Uh, my sister and I took a couple of trips here so together, and um, it'd be really nice because like I said, you know I've got a lot of friends here. She has a lot of friends here. Mm. Uh, it'd be nice for her to be able to bring my nephew yeah. and, and come hang out for a little while if I'm still here working. Um, if not, then in the future, I know they will uh, come back. And come. I'd love, to, I'd love for my mom just to be able to come and see some of the work that I've got up. Yeah, totally. You know, if I have another show, maybe that could work. You what know? do they think of? What do they think of your lifestyle? Like uh, they're, as an they're, they're super, 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 super supportive. I can't say that enough. Because a very different world, being you know, coaching and, <coughs> and training athletes like like your, your father yeah did. yeah well you know they're they're educators my dad has a doctorate in education mm-hmm. uh, my mother is a teacher they both taught and uh worked in the school systems for you know my mom 30 plus years my dad almost 50 years nice. and um, yeah. so they understand what i'm trying to do my mom's a uh, is a great art teacher um she understands what i'm trying to do uh, i speak with her pretty much every day Mm-hmm. Um, I have a really close relationship with her. Um, I really feel like that uh, you should. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean um, and I think that because of that, um, they're a lot more accepting of what I'm trying to do and understand. It's the communication. Yeah, and understand yeah. where I'm going with what I'm trying to do. You know, the uh, the I couldn't thank them enough. I mean, yeah. um, the, they made the statue possible just as much as anybody that contributed yeah, money. Yeah. And if you look at, you know, if you get, when you get a chance to get out there, there's a plaque that I also designed um, for the statue. And nice. on it is all 900 plus names of every person that donated any money towards the statue. Oh, that's awesome. And um, my folks' names are on there as well because they donated time and mm-hmm. love and. And I just, you know, just as much as anybody else. And yeah, that's, I, that's I, lovely. I want to, I mean, I can't thank them enough. Yeah, of you know, course. My family. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, I think um, something that resonated with me as you were saying that was, I think when you're doing something uh, in the creative field, that can be quite, um, it can be quite blind to some people that, that aren't in the creative, you know, it can be quite a gray area. It's like, well, how, you know, is he, is he or she, are they, are they eating? Okay. Like, mm. Wh- mm. have they sold anything? Do, mm. How are they getting their money? You know, mm. it's, it's, it'll, so when you're, w- when you communicate with your, your family, mm-hmm. just that communication leans more towards that heavier support of like, as long as they, they know you're not starving or well, as long as they yeah know well not. you know my mom still asks me you know what i've had to eat today you mm-hmm. know i mean she's a mother you know oh um, we all go through that peaks and troughs of, of of our career paths where yeah you could do with they eat you know you could do with some food or others yeah, are just like you're no just doubt. flying high it's, it's no doubt it. yeah i mean uh, you kind of got to accept as an artist that there are going to be peaks and valleys just like you're talking about mm-hmm. and um it's up to you you know, you have no boss, so you are the boss. Uh, you're the you're the promotion crew. You're mm. the you know you you are the distributor. Mm. You are all of those hats. Mm. You know, and you've got to be able to somehow manage all of that together. You know, um, I feel like that every day I work. You know, I work um, from the time that I get up till the time I go to sleep, mm. whether I'm 
directly communicating with someone about a sale for a piece or possibly a gallery about having a show or just thinking of ideas or working on art itself, Mm -hmm. you know, doing promotional stuff like what we're doing today. Um, I mean, it just never, it really never ends. Uh, I went to bed last night, probably about two o'clock in the morning and, um, I was watching um, some Dick Cavett interviews with uh, famous directors and uh, thinking about how they approach things. So that's even work to me. That's you know? yeah, of course it's part of the part of the. It's learning. Yeah, absolutely. It's like I'm always wanting to learn more about yeah. about other places, about how other artists work. Um, I like to go to a lot of shows. Uh, I consider that uh, it's pleasure, but it's also work. Study, aren't. Making myself R&D. better, yeah. yeah Research, de- development, yeah, yeah, no doubt. You um, yeah, you you have to kind of attack things in a certain way because the, as an art, as an artist, or at least a self-employed person, you, I mean, we're very fortunate as self-employed people to make something out of nothing. True. You know, it starts in here. True. But then you've got to have a uh, a plan of attack. Mm-hmm. You've got to have a strategy, mm-hmm. and that that's really the time consuming bit, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Everything else is pleasure. <laughs> you know? Well, it's that, and I, I tell you, man, the the two toughest things really it's it's not the creation. No. Nah. Uh, it's it's the it's the stress that's involved uh, with sales, and mm-hmm. with attempting to have shows or an event. And, um, you know, maybe even planning a tour in some people's cases, you know, trying to plug those dates in. um, That's the toughest thing for me is uh, and the legwork that it really takes um, meeting the right people, uh, being able to present yourself in a professional manner, um, showing a good track record you know, yeah. over time so yeah. that people would want to either purchase your art because they feel like there's a lot of people out there right now that purchase art because it's an investment. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I was lucky enough at the last show to sell 13 pieces to one gentleman. And, uh, That's amazing. and wow. I asked him, I asked him, you know, what turned him on. And he, and he just told me straight up, I'm looking to buy art that I feel like is going to go up in value, and yeah, and I, and I feel like that your art is coming on, or you as an artist are beginning mm. to come on, and um, in a few years, I won't be able to purchase it. Yeah, that's right. And because uh, you'll just keep on going, your 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 stocks climbing because you're doing things that are of a promotional nature on the street. Yeah, and that I really I feel like that I feel like that there's so many people that are looking yeah. looking to purchase for investment, and so you've got to really prove that you're investment worthy. Yeah. And there's a lot of pressure involved in all of that. I'll be honest with you, um, the the creation the creation's easy, man. Yeah. I mean, I've got a bunch of stuff that I've been working on that I'd love to put out. You know, it's just a stack and stacks and stacks. I mean, sure, it's the same way with you producing Good. tracks. Yeah, you know, you've got ideas yeah. about songs. You got ideas about music yeah. that you want to, you know, play with, and you've just got so much. And I so, mean, that's good. That's a po- is that a positive from a creative, but, but like I, an I artist think, point of view, like yourself? Yeah, I think so. You've got assets. They're stocked. They're ready to yeah, go. Right? I think so. Yeah, same. I, I think so. I mean, yeah. um, it's just. You know where, where they're going to be debuted. You know, yeah, and, and which is the burden again. Is you're bringing up your kid, and you don't. You've got to take yeah. them to school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I just, I, I really, I want, I want as many people to see what I do as possible. That's why you know, street art has become so viable for me uh, to promote myself and other artists too. Mm. And uh, I'm beginning to get a pretty good network of people that are also out there that are working hard to promote their own art. Yeah. And it, I start to see it paying dividends for some of these people. They're getting the shows um i'd love to have some group shows with some of these same people and we help each other i think i think artists as a mm. whole need to help each other more absolutely um, I, I think there's a lot of competition out there and i mean and if you look at other people's successes uh, mm. and you get discouraged by it you need to get out of the game uh, you need to go yeah. find something else Agreed. to do um, i i tried to I try to revel in other people's successes as well. For real. Um, it's, it's a karma thing, yeah. but it, but it's also, you know, artists should help other artists. Yeah. And, yeah. um, I run into a lot of brick walls with people. Don't get me wrong. I mean, LA, like I said, is a really tough place. I think people here in London have been way more open. I think the scene mm. is, is blowing up here. Mm. And, um, I think that people are more apt to help each other. 
Yeah. Um, I've just, I've, that's just some things that I've noticed as an artist. And um, I'm really happy to say that it's helped me as an artist. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Yeah, I think there is a, there's, there's enough in the pot for everybody. You haven't got to be precious. Like mm. I think in this, this day and age is th- th- with, with the way the internet's opened up uh, new audience and new crowds, people didn't even know they were into a scene until s- certain things came into configuration online. Like you can have your audience when you're ready. You just got to know what you want to do. Do you know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. And I think things are changing. I mean, uh, artists, you know, they want to have gallery affiliations. I do. Um, Mm. I like having shows. I like having a big group of people show up uh, and have an event. Um, I I want it to translate to sales. Um, That's the hard part. And, uh, I mean, there's always people that are willing to go to an event, uh, especially if there's free alcohol. And um, if you can sell some art, then good. And the thing is, is that it's so many other, you know, venues, so many other avenues for you to be able to promote yourself, mm. sell your own art. I mean, my Instagram, I try to, I try to use the Instagram as best I can. The followers are starting to come. It's, it takes a while. You're trying to build something. And, mm. you know, that, that as an avenue to generate more sales, I've had more from that than from my website. And um, although I do still sell a few pieces off the website, I had a guy contact me the other day uh, from New York City, didn't know the dude, just was scrolling through images on the internet and found me. So it turned out, yeah, to, be, so it turned awesome. out to be a great guy, mm-hmm. you know. So all of these different ways, you know, um, I think that if you utilize them all, you, can't, you won't have to be completely dependent on a gallery system. Um, here, I think the galleries are way more receptive, though, because they're yeah. looking for new artists. Uh, I think I've, in L.A., it felt like that it was a lot. It was very closed. And it was the same kind of thing rolling through? <sighs> very every... similar stuff yeah. at a lot of different places um, mm. and the same names. And uh, there is some of that here, too. I mean, yeah. uh, you, you've got people that you know, run galleries here and they, they want to be, you know, financially viable. They yeah. want to have artwork that people will collect for, you know, the money yeah, aspect sure. of it yeah, and yeah. the future, future uh, gains that they'll receive by buying it. So it, it, you can't forget there's money involved, but I think that it's just way more open here. I think people are more willing to take a chance on people that are doing art here. Mm. And that's why that's another reason why I love London so much. You yeah, know? but yeah. Uh, the system the system here is just you know it's just wide open. So, who who who's who's your inspirations? Like who? Do you, not not necessarily you know because I know what it's like like you say you the other day you were watching di- last night you were watching directors. <laughs> yeah, you get, you get yeah. influenced on all different levels. Yeah, but what yeah. are your main influence? What what would you say would be recently or or from early doors was an influence? Um, well, just you know. Obviously, the two greatest artists of the 20th century, uh, you know, Picasso and Dali. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, I really like Van Gogh. And, uh, and, and I like him for, for a variety of reasons, mainly because he was doing something different. Um, mm-hmm. I think his vision was there. Um, Picasso was really the first artist that got to realize his, you know, fame and, you know, receive the money while he was still alive. Mm. Dali as well. Uh, Dali, I like for, uh, I like Picasso because he was so proficient in so many styles, uh, and changed his style. He's kind of like the Madonna of art. He could reinvent himself <laughs> every like one that. or two, and, <laughs> yeah. um, and and honestly, the passion behind what he was, you know, putting out there. Um, some of the earlier work was more, you know, um, technical. Um, you know, Blue Period, and then even his Cubist works were more technical than maybe some of the doves and promotional stuff he was doing at the end of, the, of his life. Um, as a kid, I read. Uh, part of another reason why I really, really like Picasso is I read, you know, uh, as a kid that towards the end of his life, he never paid a check. He never paid for any food. Uh, when they brought the bill, he would just draw him a dove or whatever and say, there you go, and walk away. Uh, and in my mind as a kid, uh, yeah. as a kid, I was like, wow, how ultimate is that? Right. Um, Dali, awesome. because of his, you know, self-promotion, not to mention uh, a, a a totally different take on mm. on surrealism and was really the godfather of surrealism mm-hmm. and um, to be able to step away from interpretive stuff that people were doing at the time knowing it had competition like Picasso who yeah. was alive at the same time he was working um, <laughs> and then his wife to be so brilliant to create this persona for him 
uh, and him run with it. And uh, I think that people that were handling his estate uh, and his distribution towards the end devalued him a little bit because they put out right. so much stuff. They, they, um, if they could put something out and he would sign yeah. his name to it because he wanted to ensure his... Uh, his legacy, I guess. Yeah, forever. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, and really, that's what it was. And um, it, it worked. Um, it, it hurt him a little bit on on value on some pieces, not his original stuff, but... You know, if you wanted a trinket, there is plenty of them. And mm. it did make them a hell of a lot more prolific. Um, it didn't catch up to Picasso. Picasso put out more art in his time than any other artist. Um, I, I love the I love Van Gogh, like I said. Um, I got to go and go see his uh, exhibition, you know, there, wow. there in, in Amsterdam. Nice. And I don't know how many pieces they had total, 30-something pieces. And you see a progression wow. over time all the way up to Crows over Wheatfield. And a couple of his self portraits and ability to stand there and look eye to eye yeah, with yeah, the guy. like steps away. That's insane. Yeah, it's really amazing. Uh, I, I highly encourage anybody that's yeah, in course. Amsterdam maybe take the boat tour, see Anne Frank, and then go oh. over there right. and and also go see Rembrandt because he's an amazing artist as well. Um, realist, uh, he's probably the other Dutch master uh, besides uh, Van Gogh, um, but. I also, me personally, as far as my work goes, um, I like Andy because Andy changed the game. Yeah. Um, I like what he did. Um, I like some of his stuff. Um, but Keith Haring really is my hero. Uh, and uh, Keith Haring, really what he does or did um, is he uses some of the most simple forms. If, if you're not familiar with what Keith Haring does, um, he, he used some of the most simple forms to convey some very powerful messages and, um, you know, started out promoting himself. Uh, the only outlet he really had was in the subways of New York. And if there was a poster that was down, uh, advertisement that was down, he would work on that space. He got himself arrested a few times uh, because he was doing it. Yeah, that's cool to see. Um, but he was, he was out yeah. there, and he, was, and he wasn't writing just to write. Mm. He was writing and putting up stuff that had some type of social value behind mm. it. Um, and I, I really I feel like that what I'm trying to do is convey a message as well. Um, I think he was political in a lot of ways as well, but, um, and his style is similar to what I do. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, I can't help but think, you know, that some of those people there, all of those people bleed over into what mm -hmm. I do. And, um, but I really feel like what I do is different, you know, from any of those people. Yeah, totally. Um, but the ideas, and like you said, inspiration comes from all over the place. I, I love to listen Every to day. music when yeah. I work. Um, a lot of times it helps me get into the zone. Mm -hmm. If you... Uh, my apologies to anybody that ever lived below me or beside me, <laughs> uh, especially once I get going. A lot of times I'll listen to the same song on repeat yeah, yeah. a thousand times, and yeah. uh, I'm sure it probably got real old for some of those folks. Uh, and I'm sorry, but... When you're in the studio, you ha you're having to mix something over and over again. Uh, it, it, it's, it's old to everybody else before you even finished making it. Mm -hmm. what, um, what, kind of music, what kind of music inspires you? Um, I don't know. It's just, it depends. It's all kinds of stuff. Rock and roll. I've mm -hmm. always been a rock and roll guy. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I listen to a lot of the older stuff, uh, everything from, you know, Buddy Holly and Elvis, Chuck Berry, all the way, you know, all the way through. Um, I'm a huge GNR fan. Um, I listen to a lot of that. I uh, still mm -hmm. do. The mm -hmm. Appetite album, I think, is one of the greatest albums ever made. Um, yeah, yeah. I just, in my opinion, yeah. um, I think you can listen to the whole thing from start to finish without a single problem. Yeah, no, no. I mean, there's there's no skip on that. No. Um, I've had that debate with a lot of people. What's your favorite albums? That's always my favorite. Yeah, it's, man. I can't, you know. But um, I also listen to a lot of uh, different stuff too. I like MGMT. Uh, I like some of their mm -hmm. flow. I like the way it sounds. Mm -hmm, I like mm -hmm. uh, yeah. like MIA. Um, I'll listen to other rap as well. It just, you know. I'm kind of an older dude, you know. I turned 40 this year, um, so my taste's probably a little different than mm -hmm. the newer crowd, you know. Um, I listen to some newer music. I try, I try to give it a chance. I really do. I swear to but God, but, I do. but at the same time, it's it's one of those things where, uh, obviously, that's an influence. But you, you school, you school people within your field. I mean, like, it's not that's not your first kind of place. Mm. You, what mm. you do in terms of art, it. it 
surpasses you're right, right up the front you know what i mean it's that's the way i see it it's like it's if i was to turn around and proclaim that i was up front with art i probably wouldn't be no in no way, i mean you I, know I'm, I'm a really poor musician i've tried to play a bunch of different <laughs> instruments i do not have a singing voice <laughs> I, I, i'll be the first to admit that hey, listen you don't need a singing voice this day and age brother <laughs> well I, I couldn't carry i couldn't carry a tune in a bucket bro right, and right. uh and i've and i've tried to play uh, i was in a band in high school and eventually I ended up being the bassist because i couldn't screw up the song that bad <laughs> and i'm not gonna lie and i've, I've played with some fabulous musicians i've been around a lot of fabulous musicians and uh, and seriously uh, i know that that's not my forte mm -hmm. and um you know I, I enjoy going to a good show uh this past year i went to reading i saw some acts that i'd never seen mm -hmm. before in person i really uh, Did you see biffy claro no i didn't get no. to see him no. i think that was this year they all merge as years go quicker yeah. they all merge as the one thing that's really good about the festivals over here is I think it, I, th I think you know it's some, somewhat to do with the the EU and mm -hmm. being part of the, the union is uh, some of the restrictions they had were of sound relation really? and how it's too loud. You know, a lot of these venues being shut down because of noise. Was really? because the EU used to put a cap on certain festivals, for instance, were just like. Yeah, I heard that. I did hear that. I did hear that. But this year, it's just and last year, it's like whoosh, the volumes yeah. are right up. You know. Yeah, I know the the show. Hey, I'm gonna tell you right now. I really had a great time at, at Reading. I, mm. I really did. I, that's something that if I'm around this summer, I, I, I mean, well, they're off this year, I guess. They take a year off, don't they? I, I'm not sure actually. Do they take a year <laughs> off. <laughs> If if they don't, then Glastonbury I'm gonna, do. I think they Glastonbury take maybe they take no, a year. No off. Reading, I don't think Reading. No Reading, Reading will be back at it. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I'll be back at Reading again this year. I'm definitely gonna try to take in some stuff here in town. Uh, mm -hmm. Do Hyde Park. Definitely uh, like to go yeah. and go see. A, uh, I'm I'm all about like going to a, and seeing a spectacle. Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I mean. Uh, I really enjoyed that. I've, I've been to a couple of really large shows. Uh, went to a show, uh, million people at the show. I like that. That's yeah. I, I, so you like the gathering? I aspect. want to see it. I, I want to be a yeah. part of that, and uh, I want. I like the vibe. I like the energy. You nice. know. Yeah. Um, so I'd, I'd like to take in some of those events. You know, while I'm here, it's just you know, it's more inspiration. You know what I mean? And I like to draw yeah. those events too. I draw that stuff too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, oh yeah, I've seen, I've seen. Um, and yeah, you like you say, it's it's R and D. It's the all of it. Yeah. yeah. Everything from all of, everything from meeting new artists to meeting other people, to reading, to watching something, you know, it all bleeds into the creative process for me, personally. What's the biggest epiphany that you had through, uh, recently, of, some, of something that you've watched or you've, you've um, mm. you, you know, you've R&D'd and all of a sudden you, you just had a bit of a kind of a, a synergy to it took place and you're like, oh shit, well, that, that makes sense for what I'm doing. I, I tell you, um, something that uh, maybe not, something that I've used just yet, but something that I've been looking at for about a year. Uh, Bear Conductive, um, they're a group here in London that do uh, electromagnetic or electro-stimulant uh, paint, and uh, where you touch the paint and it will relay uh, electrical impulse to a um, either a uh, con another machine or a light, and you either light it up or you make a sound or you play some music, and I think it's really rad. And I'd love so, to figure out a way yeah, to yeah. make that happen. Explain that. It's more <coughs> yeah, oh, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe I'm not explaining No, you are. Well. You are. But um, I want to be clear. Uh, what they do is they, they create a paint that's got, uh, that's got conductive uh, capabilities. So you can use that paint in your artwork or you can draw a line on the ground. Um, you can do whatever you want what, to with it. And, what, 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 and if you touch it or right. uh, you touch it you walk across it you complete the circuit and then it does something lights come on those right exactly lights will come on a, a musical you know musical uh, note will come out a uh, person talking uh, you can start oh my start God. a song i know it's something you should really look at that it that is sick maybe we collaborate on something um Jeez, that's use use what you're doing right now you mm. know i'm, I'm be honest yeah, um, man. i wanted to approach you about it sooner but that's an amazing but, idea um, anyway i'm um, looking to maybe do something i wanted to do something this past year with it um and I, I think it uh i think it's really a great idea those those guys came up with a great idea um and wow, they're they're starting to idea. blow up they really are starting to blow up uh their business is really expanding um i'd love to be a part of it um i want to do a show this year where uh we create i can create a large piece and um maybe it's a cityscape and when you touch certain parts of the cityscape or you <laughs> 
You it can does. imagine it now. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine the apps that you can get that work with your phone to make that thing? Exactly. Cool. And see, and that's and like I said, that's not my forte. So yeah. I need I need to meet the people. You know, I need someone that yeah. creates music. Uh, I'd like to talk with somebody that creates apps. No, a man that knows a man. Sort of thing. Yeah, yeah and, right. and put it all together. I'll create the art. You know, mm -hmm. I got no problem. We'll create the art. Um, and I'll somehow come up with a way to use that paint in the art. But uh, and that's that was uh, that was just really amazing to me to think yeah, that you could do that. And wow. that's something that's that's <coughs> just an idea. See, and I'm talking about something that I haven't even done yet. Yeah. And that's something I've been thinking about and a way to approach it, sketch it up mm -hmm. uh, for about a year now. And uh, I just need the outlet. You yeah. know, I need a venue. I need, you know, and, and that's what, as an artist, you're always trying to bring those, you know, moving parts together to and make the machine. And they are constant machine. moving, aren't they? It's like this idea, yeah, like this idea already yeah. exists. It's yeah, clear. And, but you know what it is? It's like there's loads of different kind of pieces of a puzzle that are constantly moving. And it's very basic right now. Okay. There's some artists that are working in it and they're doing some really cool stuff. I just want to take it to another level mm -hmm. and, 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 and build upon the work that they've done, uh, that the company's done, that these other artists have done, and I want to learn from them um, and know how to be more effective and be more efficient in what I'm doing to be able to work with that media. Um, I ain't be rat. I mean, to be able to do a show yeah. where the entire show lights up and does, you know. The moment you walk into the place, it's like something's going on. Quick, get your phone out. Well, the phone's doing something while you're doing something. I can see it all now. Mm. And then you, yeah, I mean. And that's what people really want. I mean, they want interact. Uh, and, and as an artist, that's what you want. You want interaction, you know. Uh, with the street art, mm. I get it slowly. I get feedback. Mm. I see the reaction from people, like seeing someone take a picture. and But people contacting me or with a lot of paste up, especially political, people will write on it. Mm. I love it, a conversation. Mm. Some people get mad if people write on their stuff or tear off something. Um, I want that. I want a conversation yeah. between the yeah. audience that I'm reaching. It was really funny this past year, a good example is I put up a Theresa May piece and uh, it just said, uh, liar liar because the song had been out mm -hmm. and, it, and they were refusing to acknowledge the song was you know you know it's climbing the charts and it's about her and no one would talk about it they if you listen to the top 10 they yeah. wouldn't play it even yeah. though it was number one yeah. and uh suppression of ideas is not what i'm about mm -hmm. and uh so i put that up and someone wrote on it you know added to it pen you know liar liar tower block on fire and, and it's that reaction, you know, because someone wow. saw that. And that was an wow. official reaction because, I mean, Grinfield's not a joke. What yeah. happened there was, was wrong. And to not have a response for that. And then when you do, to handle it the way you did, it's just not right. Yeah. And there's a lot of people have no place to live still. We're mm -hmm. talking almost, almost we're working on half a year later, yeah, over right. half a that's year. Right, yeah. Those people mm -hmm. are still have no home. Um, they haven't addressed the 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 cladding on these no, buildings. No, no, no. Uh, you got out. 60 something buildings that are in just in the London area mm -hmm. that all have the cladding, including a friend of mine's place. Wow. And I really feel like that yeah. they've got to six, how many? 60 Jesus buildings. Christ. So, you know, and some, some councils are taking it upon themselves to do something, but they're not being forced and uh, developers don't, don't really care. And uh, the fact that some of this was even used to begin with, knowing that it violated the it's height disgusting. restrictions it's and the usage and the parameters terrible. for its purchase, that's really bad. Yeah. Um, and I, I just wanted to say something about it, you yeah. know, and for someone else to understand where I'm coming from and to interact with me, that's cool. So whether yeah. it's like that or it's someone shows up at a show and they push the button and it tells them something or they get to make their own music, um, Really, one of the artists I saw had, had created uh, a, a boom box, and it was really great. It was a boom box and had several sounds, and you could actually work and make music by touching oh, that's the piece, wicked. parts of the piece. It was genius. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I just want to build on that those ideas, yeah. you know, and, and work with those people, you know. I just got to reach out. I'm here, you know. Um, I just, let's, let's talk, you know, and, and let's figure out how we can have another show 
somewhere here in London, maybe address some of these issues. You know, uh, I don't know how political some of these other people are, mm -hmm. but I would like to use that as a platform because you, you draw people in is great. The other night I went and looked at some of the lights, the illuminations that they had up That's right, here yeah. in the city. I, uh -huh. um, I think that's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, when you turn... Uh, a building own and it's psychedelic you know full color yeah Westminster yeah. just psychedelic it had huge sculptural elements like those foxes at Leicester Square yeah. and I, I just <laughs> I think it's really rad I mean yeah. that's really really rad and it brought so many people out and then I just thought to myself what if there was a message behind it I'm not saying it wasn't beautiful and uh, and there is a message there um, they're trying to promote some pr promote those areas. I get that, and they're stimulating economics, uh, bringing people to those areas. They had dinner. They you had mean a, the food for thought aspect? Yeah, yeah, but I but I but I really feel like exactly. Um, if you're gonna have a pint, and you know you're gonna get that anyway, you're gonna have those people come for that. They're gonna buy the pint anyway. Mm -hmm. Let's 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 put something out there for people to really chew yeah. on. Yeah. And um, I mean. I discovered a new restaurant I'd never been to. It was really great. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been there if it wouldn't have been for the lights. So that's a good thing on those yeah. for those folks. But as far as art goes, I really feel like that it, art should have some focus. I'm not saying that a smiley face isn't great because mm -hmm. people do need to smile. Mm -hmm. There needs to be a lot more love and happiness in this world. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But see, that even had a message. Mm -hmm. See, that even has a message. Yeah. You know, and it's, <laughs> it, it does, it does. And the idea, it, you know, there has to be something behind it. Yeah. You know, you see a yeah. lot of guys that have been real prolific and they've got a lot of followers and they're making money, got notoriety, but there's no message behind it. Mm. And I, after a while, I get really tired of that. Yeah. Uh, but maybe it's just me as an artist. You know, I think a lot of people like to purchase art because... They, they want to understand it. I think art sometimes, uh, I think some artists, and I, I'm guilty as well, maybe make the viewer think a little too much. Uh, maybe that's not what they're after. Maybe they just want to be entertained. Uh, people have a very short attention span nowadays mm -hmm. uh, on the majority. And, you know, sometimes if uh, a person's too political, like you mentioned before, maybe that turns off of fast yeah, the audience. Can do that. So it just, you know, you're always like kind of gambling with what you're putting out there, but I still want to have purpose. There was always this, um, you know, following on with what you're saying, there was always this kind of sentiment that I had with a lot of graffiti growing up as a kid, you know. Um, in the early doors, one thing I used to love, I used to love was the graffiti, all crazy writing, but then there'd be like a cartoon character there. Um, when you have the sweetener of the cartoon character, it doesn't matter what it, the thing says, that you can spend ages trying to decipher what the wording mm -hmm. means. You know, growing up as a kid, that's the, that's the hardest trick mm -hmm. is like being able to immediately recognize who did that piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you've got like a, you know, a, a Ren and Stimpy character mm -hmm. or, a, you know, thingy in the brain or, and they're saying something political, it, it kind of creates, it, it makes it more palatable, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So it, within that same way, I guess it's when you've got like a, um, like Guns N' Roses, for instance, mm. as a band, they were saying a lot of horrific stuff, which was actually going on on the street and the way they lived. But the way they put it in melody, the way they made oh, yeah. it. For sure. It is like... Spoonful of sugar. Yeah, exactly. Makes the medicine Ruffled go the smooth, down. Ruffled the yeah. smooth, you know. I think that's the that's the best remedy for, for conveying a message or, or at least uh, trying to capture a, a younger perspective. I think you're right, brother. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think you're right, mm. brother. I like all that. But, um, all right, listen... I've been in complete in awe of just some of the stuff you've been saying. I've, oh. you know, I feel like I, 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 I. Thanks for letting me talk. Dude, honestly, I swear <laughs> to God. Travis Moore, where can we find out more of your stuff? Uh, well, you can you can go to my Instagram. I think that's the best way you can interact with yeah, me directly. Right. Um, at Travis for sale, T R A V I S, the number the four, S A L E. Yeah, and, it'd be up in mine. You, and you, and yeah. yeah, please hit me up there. Direct message me there. Um, uh, you got a commission idea. You got a, a venue. You got a collaboration. Yeah, still you one. Anything. Hit yeah. me up there. That's the easiest way to get me. But you can also check out my Facebook. It's just Travis Moore. Um, you can look at the art of Travis. Some badass stuff on there. I swear to God. I try to keep stuff up. You know, updated. Consistency is his middle name and, for real. And if you want to see some of my older work, uh, see some other things that I've done in the past. Um, maybe buy a print, something mm -hmm. like that. You can go check check out. Paintings by Travis, 
Nice. And uh, my contact information is there as well. And just hit me up. Yeah. You know, I'd be happy to speak with anybody. I'll, you know, I, like I said, you give me a call or you send me a message, uh-huh. I will definitely get back with you uh-huh. because uh-huh. I am working on trying to promote myself and expand my audience and any way that I can do that and to meet another person, meet another artist, meet another friend. That's, the that's what it's really about. That's so. what it's all about. Travis Moore, ladies and gentlemen, stay lucky, brother. Thanks. <laughs> and try. <Yeah. laughs> Thanks for having me. It's going to be hard over here. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs>